Hello, human geographers. We are back at it again this evening. Tonight, we examine the second agricultural revolution. So let's dive right in. The second agricultural revolution was a period of technological change from the 1600s to mid-1900s that started in Western Europe, beginning with pre-industrial improvements such as crop rotation and better horse collars, and concluding with industrial innovations to replace human labor with machines and to supplement natural fertilizers and pesticides with chemical ones. The second agricultural revolution preceded, contributed to, and coincided with the Industrial Revolution, which is an important note to make. The Second Agricultural Revolution began in the 1600s and continued through about 1880. It initially began in Great Britain, the Netherlands, Denmark, and other neighboring countries, but quickly diffused throughout Europe and some of its colonies, like America. This revolution was centered on advancements in planting or sowing of seeds, as well as the reaping or harvesting of crops. At the same time, there were improvements in storage, irrigation, and transportation. So let's take a look at how all this worked. The new crops that came into Europe through trade with the Americas via the Columbian Exchange, including crops like corn and potatoes, were well suited for the climate and soils of Western Europe, bringing land that was previously considered marginal or unproductive under cultivation, thereby expanding the amount of arable land. The second agricultural revolution saw agricultural activities shift toward making profit, what we will call commercial agriculture, away from more subsistence forms of agriculture. So farmers began to increase their investments to try and maximize the output from their farms. This led to increased agricultural productivity. A political reason for the increase in productivity was the passage of a series of laws called the Enclosure Acts in Great Britain. This allowed farmers to buy land from the government. This increased the size of farms and farmers began to fence in or enclose their land. As farmers owned larger tracts of land, they changed how they used that land. Profit-driven farmers began to use artificial fertilizers to increase productivity. And as the second agricultural revolution overlapped with the industrial revolution that began in Great Britain in the 18th century, new technologies were developed and more agricultural work was mechanized. When combined with the loss of common land due to the Enclosure Acts, many poor peasant farmers were forced out of agriculture and many moved to urban areas serving as the workforce in the emerging industrial sector. Farmers also began to utilize a more sophisticated crop rotation system that increased agricultural output. Crop rotation is the practice of rotating use of different fields from crop to crop each year to avoid exhausting the soil. Crop rotation has existed for hundreds of years, but during the second agricultural revolution, the four field system emerged. Previous systems of crop rotation left fields fallow or land that had previously been cultivated that has been left unseeded for a season or more in order to rest or regenerate nutrients. But the four field system used rest crops like clover to actually increase the amount of nutrients provided to the soil. In addition, root crops like turnips were planted and served as feed for the growing animal population who in turn provided manure for fertilizer. Since the second agricultural revolution coincided 
when the Industrial Revolution. Let's examine some of the new technologies that helped to increase agricultural production. The seed drill was used for planting seeds. It sowed the seeds by shooting them directly into freshly dug holes, thereby increasing efficiency and decreasing waste. Early plows were developed to break up and turn over soil before planting, but John Deere developed a steel plow that was stronger and lighter. The mechanical reaper was developed by Cyrus McCormick to help harvest grains. It both cut and bundled the grains and helped to increase yields at least 10 times. The tractor, when powered by the internal combustion engine of the later Industrial Revolution, helped to increase efficiency and further reduce the amount of manual labor that was needed on farms. In addition to new inventions, there were new ways to help fertilize the soil. Previously, animal manure, ashes, and decayed organic material were used to improve the soil. But by the 1800s, new agrochemicals were being developed. These new synthetic fertilizers were made from petroleum byproducts and helped to increase the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium contents in the soil. New developments in transportation also helped to improve agricultural production. The opening of the Erie Canal in 1825 allowed farmers to transport non-perishable products such as wheat or corn for a fraction of the cost and in a fraction of the time. Railroads made it cheaper to transport produce and grain crops from farms to city markets as well as ports. They also made it more efficient to get cattle to market. Railroads also made new areas more economically viable for agriculture, such as the interior Great Plains region of the United States. And once the refrigerated train car was introduced in 1867, U.S. farmers could ship perishable foods such as meat over larger distances, reaching city populations quickly. So what was so revolutionary about new inventions, laws, and agricultural practices? Well, farms became larger and production became more efficient, so producers began to raise crops that generated the greatest surplus so they could sell their crops for profit. New mechanical innovations and advancements helped to generate those surpluses. At the same time, these advancements led to a decreasing need for farm labor to plant and harvest the crops. Many unemployed farm laborers migrated to the cities to work in factories, as did small farmers who could not compete with the larger, more profitable landowners. So rural areas and farming communities experienced a population loss as increasing numbers of people migrated to urban areas. Those huge surpluses of food were needed to feed that growing urban population, who in turn provided more labor for the factories of the Industrial Revolution. More food meant a decline in things like malnutrition, Better diets led to falling death rates and healthier, longer lives, which in turn led to the rapid population growth that is associated with this time period and the transition to stage two of the demographic transition. The expanding population increased the pool of available workers, but it also affected the urban infrastructure, causing increased demand for water, problems with sanitation, a housing shortage, and increase the wealth and opportunity gap between workers and management.